This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1307. Five Nutrition Myths Busted and Four Truths That Are Bang On by Emma Hogan with lesmills.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey there, happy middle of the week Wednesday and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and more, just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors and always with permission from the sites. And on Fridays, I answer your questions. You can send one in at oldpodcast.com slash ask or just send an email to health at oldpodcast.com. Now it's the middle of the week, which means we're due for a little bit of inspiration. So like I do every Wednesday, I wanna share an inspirational quote with you. So here we go. Quote, follow your hunches like the ancient navigators followed the stars. The voyage may be lonely, but the stars will take you where you wanna go. David J. Mahoney. All right, with that, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Five Nutrition Myths Busted and Four Truths That Are Bang On by Emma Hogan with lesmills.com. In the world of optimal nutrition and weight loss, there are misconceptions aplenty. We spoke to Dr. Ginger Gottschall, research and science advisor for the American Council on Exercise, who clears up the confusion by spelling out some facts about diet and exercise. Myth number one, if you exercise regularly, Eating quality food is paramount. The timing and size of your meals is much less important. Not true, says Dr. Gottschall. Quote, quality nutrients are important, but so too is the timing of your eating. The benefits you get from exercise are maximized when you eat every three to five hours. The most critical meal is within an hour of finishing your training. You should always ensure you have 0.3 grams of protein per kilogram body weight within two hours. This means that if you weigh 64 kilograms or about 140 pounds, you should have about 19 grams of protein within two hours of completing your training, end quote. Myth number two, if you want to lose weight while maintaining the energy you need for regular exercise, you should aim to lose no more than one pound per week. This is an appropriate estimate, but it's certainly not right for everyone, says Dr. Gottschall. Quote, the maximum amount is based on your total body weight. You should aim to reduce your total mass by no more than 1% each week. If you weigh 200 pounds, the maximum recommended loss per week is two pounds, end quote. Myth number three, the ideal way to increase weight loss is to minimize fat intake. Not at all, says Gottschall. Quote, there are some vitamins such as vitamins A, D, E, and K that can only be absorbed with dietary fat. And we need these important vitamins to support everything from vision and immunity to bone density and heart health. Saturated fats, as found in beef, lamb, pork, cream, butter, and cheese, should be limited to less than 10% of your total intake. While you don't want to consume too much saturated fat, try and steer clear of low-fat and no-fat alternatives as these typically include added sugars and processed ingredients, end quote. Myth number four, high-fat, low-carbohydrate diets like the keto and Atkins diets are ideal for weight loss as well as improving cardiovascular fitness. This type of eating is typically not sustainable, advises Gottschall. Quote, limiting carbohydrates is helpful only for short-term weight loss and blood sugar levels. Most people find they are unable to stick with this type of eating for longer than six months. These high-fat diets provide greater saturated fat and insufficient fiber. They can also lead to a reduction in your athletic performance when it comes to high-intensity training. End quote. Myth number five. Plant-based proteins will not provide all nine essential amino acids necessary for optimal performance. Not true. Quote, you can get all nine essential amino acids from the following plant-based protein sources tempeh, tofu, seitan, soy milk, and whole grains such as quinoa and buckwheat, says Gottschall. Quote, eggs, cow's milk, yogurt, and cheese are all great protein sources too. You can also pair brown rice with beans or 
peanut butter with oats to get all nine essential amino acids. End quote. Truth number one. Drinking chocolate milk after exercise will maximize the benefits of your training. Quote, chocolate milk is ideal for the effective maintenance, repair, and synthesis of skeletal muscle proteins. This is because dairy proteins contain the amino acid leucine, which stimulates the production of human growth hormone, or HGH. It's important to remember the whole food protein you get from eggs, beef, pork, poultry, and vegetable sources will always be superior to powders, end quote. Truth number two, carbohydrates are the most adaptable energy source for exercise and the key fuel for your central nervous system. This is a reality, says Gottschall. Quote, carbohydrates can support exercise over a large range of intensities. Carbohydrates can be utilized by both anaerobic, like high intensity, and oxidative or low intensity pathways. They are superior to fat as they drive a greater yield of energy per volume of oxygen. End quote. Truth number three. The sugar in fruit is different from the sugar in candy. This is certainly true, says Gottschall, who explains that natural sugars are found in fruit as fructose and in dairy products as lactose. Refined sugar comes from sugar cane or sugar beets as sucrose. Quote, your body metabolizes the sugar in fruit and milk differently to how it metabolizes refined sugar. To maintain a healthy diet, adults should keep their intake of added sugars to less than 10% of their total daily calories. End quote. And finally, truth number four. You need a mix of soluble and insoluble fiber in your diet. Quote, Yes, soluble fiber and insoluble fiber offer unique benefits, says Gottschall. Soluble fiber, which dissolves in water, improves digestion, reduces cholesterol, and modulates blood sugar. Oats, peas, beans, apples, citrus fruits, carrots, and barley are all good sources of soluble fiber. Insoluble fiber promotes bowel health and regularity. You'll find insoluble fiber in whole wheat flour, wheat bran, beans, cauliflower, and potatoes, end quote. You just listened to the post titled Five Nutrition Myths Busted and Four Truths That Are Bang On by Emma Hogan with lesmills.com. And I'll have some comments as usual, but first, thank you to Cozy Earth for their support. Cozy Earth makes a variety of bamboo products, including sheets, duvet covers, comforters, pillowcases, loungewear, and more. Their quality will get you talking to your friends about it. Cozy Earth's bedding and loungewear sleeps 50% less humid than cotton. They're certified free of harmful chemicals and their products come from an ethical supply chain and they have a 10-year warranty on all bedding. You don't have to worry about pilling and washing and drying is easy. It's safe in machines. I got their sheets and they're the softest I've ever had. I don't think I can ever go back to cotton after using Cozy Earth. I actually look forward to getting into bed just for the feeling. You'll see what I mean when you try it for yourself. Go to CozyEarth.com to check out the great selection of bamboo bedding and loungewear. Optimal Health Daily listeners will receive an incredible discount of 40% off site-wide when you use promo code OHDPODCAST. That's CozyEarth.com and use promo code OHD podcast at checkout. That's the best deal they've offered. So thank you so much to Cozy Earth for that. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Wow, today's author, Emma Hogan, was right. Dr. Gottschall's advice was absolutely spot on. I mean, can I, can I applaud that post? I mean, what else can I possibly say except I agree with everything that was said? So can I just end my commentary now and leave it at that? No? Keep going? Keep talking? All right. Well, I can always find something to expand on, right? I can mention a bit more about truth number four, how you need a mix of both soluble and insoluble fiber in your diet. We used to think that soluble fiber was the most important one. By the way, it's called soluble because this type of fiber likes water. Imagine what happens to dried oats when you add water to them. They plump up, right? Oats are a type of soluble fiber. They like water. Well, it turns out that these soluble fibers like oats not only like water, but they like latching on to cholesterol too. 
So eating soluble fiber was a nice way to help lower the amount of cholesterol in your body. That's why you would see on oatmeal packages when you're walking down the cereal aisle, how it would say, heart healthy or will help lower cholesterol. But now we know that even insoluble fiber has some very important health benefits. Insoluble fibers are those that don't really react with much in the body. Instead, they tend to move through the GI tract undigested. So how could this possibly be a good thing, you may wonder? Well, it turns out these insoluble fibers help keep our gut microbiome healthy. So they may not help lower our cholesterol, but they help to increase the number and type of good bacteria in the intestine. This is why Dr. Gottschall was absolutely right. Both soluble and insoluble fibers are important. Oh, by the way, as Dr. Gottschall mentioned, sources of insoluble fibers would be whole wheat and whole grain products like whole wheat bread. If you want both soluble and insoluble fibers in one packaging, beans are a great source of both. To take advantage of all the health benefits fiber has to offer, we should aim to consume between 25 and 38 grams of dietary fiber per day. And again, make sure those food sources of fiber are high in both soluble and insoluble fibers. Hey, look at that. I did find something to talk about. All right, that's enough from me for today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening every day. I hope you're having a wonderful week and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.